Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we're getting on the DT2MX build. It's uh, like we already have the engine built, so uh, we have all those uh, videos there. But today I'm doing some tear down. Uh, I've got the, uh, the tires off and I'm starting to work on the uh, removal of the spokes to get the hubs out. I think, I'm, well, for the front, I'm definitely going to have to put a new rim on. The back one, I really thought I was going to be okay, but not so much now. So I'm probably just going to go ahead and, and get the, uh, the spokes out of that one too. And some of them are probably going to have to be cut because it's pretty bad and they're about halfway. So let me get you over here and we'll take a look at this rim before we start taking it apart. Okay, you can see all the rust we got here and yeah, a lot of that probably clean up, but that's really the worst spot, I believe. The rest of it, if it wasn't for that, I would do it. It does have a couple loose spokes here. I don't understand what the deal is with that. Uh, you know, it looks like one, two, three, three of them right there in a row. So I'm kind of looking to see if there's a dent there, but I'm not seeing, well, there's a little bit, but not enough to do that. These, these have come loose or they just weren't tightened. Uh, it's kind of a wonder that the, it didn't work on the, uh, uh, the tube, but it, it had air and everything, so it was good. I really thought that these, probably all I would do is just replace the spokes on this one because uh, there's some rust down on the nipples. But I think, pretty sure I've got a new rim back there. I think I'll just go ahead and put a new rim on, on the back too. That's uh, not what I expected to do, but you know, it's, uh, it's the way it is. So that one we're gonna build all new. I've got the spokes coming for that. They should be here this week, also this one. And uh, this is a 125 hub we're going to put on the 250 with the 21 inch wheel. Basically the uh, 21 inch wheel for a uh, 125 MX. And uh, that's what I did on the other one. And we just, I think we make a couple spacers. We make some uh, stuff so the axle will fit. Uh, I've already done a video on all that. I may have to go back and look at it myself just to see. But... Uh, I've kind of, I've moved the Suzuki out for right now. I've got all this stuff laying here that I think is uh, pretty good shape. I told you the last time uh, video this hub here had a crack in it, so I won't be using that one. So I've, uh, the uh, frame, I'm going to do some cutting, and I, I think there's a few things. I can cut these ears off, probably these. Uh, just a few other little things. Uh, just we'll get them, get that stuff out of there, and I'll just go ahead and check it over, and make sure we don't have uh, any cracks. <clears throat> uh, I've got most of the other supporting parts stripped, so here's the rim for the 21, and we just repaired the fender here. Forks are already been uh, gone through, so these, I believe, these are the ones that have the new Dachi. Yep, they're the ones with the Dachi uh, tubes in it. And uh, as you know, I had to do a modification on that too. If you've been watching my channel, uh, the caps don't go down all the way. So I made a couple of uh, aluminum washers here to take up that uh, couple millimeters uh, space. So anyhow, uh, we've got that. I'm not real sure what we're going to do on the... Uh, on the uh, swing arm yet, whether I'm going to extend that. I'm kind of thinking we're going to. Uh, I've got to go th back through some of my old uh, magazines and see kind of what people were doing at the time. Uh, that's where I get most of the ideas other than, uh, you know, some of it is just obvious this will work or that won't work or whatever. But anyhow, uh, I guess I ought to go back and see if I can dig out another rim. I uh, won't be using these shocks, but I may use them for mock-up. And this, uh, this is a worn 
sprocket. I was going to do the same with that, just make it a roller as, we, as we're working on it, put it together just to roll. Uh, I've got the steering head bearings, got some wheel bearings, got uh, some bolts and other parts in there for uh, making it a roller, basically. So let me, uh, we'll get started on disassembly of the wheels. Okay, I've soaked all these with Kroll oil out on the, the nipples. This one here's actually got a couple bent ones, but they're uh, all in all, this wheel is in really good shape. I almost have, hate to be taking it apart, but that's, uh, that's what I've got for a hub, so that's what I'll do. So we'll get started on this one. And I've got a feeling that some of the ones on the rear wheel are gonna need to be cut. I wanna save as many as I can, but because you just never know when you're gonna need them. Well, it's hard to believe, but looks like I've only got to cut one. And it wasn't even in the worst spot. Surprising sometimes. Okay, all the both wheels disassembled. Only had to cut one. I'm gonna speed blast this and make sure it's good inside. Okay, so we got these taken apart. I've got uh, got my spokes separated on each one here and uh, got the bearings popped out, seals popped out, same over here and uh, looks like we've got a good a good couple of hubs here now so these will probably be the ones we're using unless I run on to something but uh, I've got uh, I think I've got the bearings for that one I've got one for this one I need to pick up a couple and I these are 60, 6203, I think. Yeah, 6203. So I should be able to get these at Auto Parts Store. These are uh, uh, alternator bearings for uh, a lot of the Ford vehicles. So I should be able to pick those up there, I hope. If not, I'll have to order them. But that's a common bearing. And I keep these, the 6201s, and I think the 60. 202s or something like that but we've got these broken down I just got a uh, text message from uh, FedEx saying that the spokes were shipped from Buchanan's so they should be here in a couple days and we'll be able to put these back together okay guys I got my spokes in and um, I'm just sitting here comparing them and looking to see if I've got what I need. Uh, I went ahead and, you know, these actually are a stepped spoke, but I went ahead and got a uh, straight spoke. It just uh, makes more sense to me on the type of bike we're working on. It's not gonna make any difference. But uh, I, uh, I've compared all the spokes that they sent me and all of them are the same length and look like they'll work fine. But I did have a problem for this. And now, now this is for the uh, DT2 rear, uh, the 18 inch. Uh, I had told the spoke maker that my holes measured 280. And that's what they measure. And he sent me spoke, spoke nipples that measure 280. That won't work. They're too tight. They will go in the hole, but you'll never be able to lace this wheel. So I, uh, I contacted him and he said, oh, yeah, you know, our mistake or whatever. And he's going to send me some 250s. And I've got a couple here. You know, I've got, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 or so. 
this is the one he's going to send me. That should be about uh, 250.250. .250. And these are eight, in, or eight gauge spokes, I believe, or nine gauge, I can't remember. But uh, he will get that changed out and everything will be just fine for the rear. And I made a little boo-boo myself when I was doing this. The, uh, this is not the rim that come off of it. And I thought I had a new rim back there, and I do. But the holes are for a uh, 0 .3, or 0 .236 nipple. So I had to look around and I found this used rim. You know, it looks a little rough on the sides in a few places. I'll clean that up. I'll put it in the, the rust bath, but, but there's almost no rust on the, uh, the rim itself. It's just the scratches, and that's going to work just fine for this MX bike. So I'm not going to worry about that. Everything seems to be straight on it. It just, uh, just needs to be laced up. So this, this is going to work when he sends out the new spokes to me. Uh, I also got a set of spokes for the front, which is the 21 inch, using the uh, 125 hub, the same setup you would have on a 125 MX with a 21 inch wheel. And I'll, we'll take a look at those uh, now. Okay, on the 21, of course this is a brand new rim. And I, I told him that I had 0.2 or 0.250 uh, holes, so he sent me the 0.236. Actually, it's seven, but uh, still going to work fine. You need that slop in the hole so that when you're lacing it up, it can move towards, towards the outside. If you don't have that, they're gonna, it's just going to be straight. And that's what would have happened with my uh, rear one if I had used the 280 uh, size. So these are going to work great. And in this case, I can't compare the spoke lengths like I did on the 18 because if you remember, this wheel that I disassembled was an 18 inch. So I just told him I needed him for a 21. And I had ordered one, uh, remember I did the uh, Yamaha 125 MX project, still working on it, that I put a 21 on, same thing. So I just told him to look back into my, my orders and give me the same ones, but make sure that I have the nipples to fit my rim. I don't. I couldn't remember whether the other one was that size or not. And he did, and he gave me the right ones. So the only one I, the only thing I can do here, is count to make sure that I have uh, 18 of the not quite 90s, which are, uh, or let's see, yeah, they are 90, 90 here. This this is the inside spoke and the outside spoke is more than 90. You can kind of see it there. And I need to have 18 of those. And I verified that. I verified I've got my nipples. So the only thing I can do here is start assembling to make sure that they're right. So I'll do that because most of the time, remember, you only have 30 days to return anything or make it right. So be sure that you don't buy a set of spokes like this from a spoke baker and put them on the shelf just thinking they're right because they they're human they make mistakes too so you either either compare them to the old parts or in this case you need to use them okay i just wanted to say too i went over and checked i couldn't remember the gauge on the rears but they're nine gauge on the rear and 10 gauge on the front. And I'm gonna go ahead, oops, excuse me. I'm gonna go ahead and prepare my, uh, my front wheel. I gotta clean it up 
And I have sandblasted, but I'm gonna go through it again, just clean it up a little bit better and get my bearings in. Uh, I've got new bearings. And uh, then we'll go ahead and start lacing this one just to make sure that we've got all the right stuff. Okay guys, I'm painting up my rear hub and front hub and I've had people ask me what colors I use and what I found that I like is the uh, Rust-Oleum and it's the heat resistant silver and it's number 7716. I use that because it, it actually looks silver instead of aluminum or bri a bright color. And after I, after I shoot it with, the, with that paint, I come back. I mean, if you like that color, that's, that's fine. You're done there. But I come back with the Rust-Oleum Clear and it's a uh, semi-gloss. And it will actually turn that almost a, uh, uh, more of a, of a silver or a, a silver gray, I guess. So I'll go ahead and give it a little shot so you can see what the, what the difference is. And it's a little bit different after it dries, but not much. So you can kind of see, and it gives you that uh, protection from the uh, from the clear to, uh, so it'll clean up better. And I'll continue to paint that up, but I think you can see that uh, there's been a little bit change in the color there. And what I do, I, and I've showed this before, I just cut some uh, covers out to put in to uh, mask up. You don't have to, <laughs> can't get it out of there now. There. But you don't, you don't have to tape them in or anything. Just cut them out of some cardboard so you can cover that up. Uh, the rest of this is not a big deal. Uh, these here, I don't worry about. I'll get a little paint in there probably, but you know, the, you put the rubbers in there and you put the cover on, you'll never know the difference. So that's what I do on those. And once we get those uh, finished up, dried and painted, or uh, uh, they're fully painted, then we'll go ahead and put the wheel bearings in. Okay, putting the bearings in. Make sure your that thing is wanting to kind of, yeah, it's wanting to go lopsided. Let me straighten it up with a plastic hammer. Yeah, watch them. You don't want to get it. And remember, put your uh, spacer in there also. Okay. Now I just got to, I don't know if you can see it or not, but the uh, spacer in there is not quite lined up. Just a little quick uh, uh, tap with a chisel in, or not a chisel, but a punch, and just pull it over, and then we'll seat it. And just get the punch in there, and you can just kind of, yeah, there we go. And that centers it up. On both sides. And then we can just go ahead and give it another little I'm just going to give it a tap, I think. Okay, good and centered. And then we've got our new seal. Just like that, and we're good to go. 
front's all ready. And on the rear, uh, you've got the, an offset here, so make sure you get this in the right way. Some of these, uh, and this one is one of them, you can put it in from either way, so it's not a big deal, but if, you, uh, if you've got one that doesn't, then you can run into an issue pretty quick. So I've got the, uh, the double bearing that goes in over here, so I'll go ahead and get that in. Okay, looks like we're got all the right stuff here. Everything appears to be lining up and long enough and not overly long, so we should be good to go on this one. The other one I'm satisfied with because I could match up the uh, the links, I could compare the links, and uh, the only thing I needed was the nipples changed out. Okay, so we've got this one ready to go. Okay, we're gonna take the uh, uh, signal light brackets off. Before we got the other side off, and I'll go ahead and start sanding this side down. And a little nice new coat of paint for the frame. Uh, flip it over, do the top side. And I've got a few of the other black parts that I can go ahead and do. Some of them need repairs. I think everything uh, is done to the frame. I, have, I may have one thing, I may have to put a tab right here. right about here to come across straight across from there to mount the CDI unit. That's uh, the only thing I can think of at the moment, but that's not a big deal. I can just uh, take some of the paint off, 
weld it on and uh, repaint it. Okay, just because I like to do things over, I was talking about this before that I might have to add this. I'm going to go ahead and do it now because I know I'm going to need some way to mount this. And uh, it's just going to be a little piece right here and I'll have to repaint that. But uh, I should have just done it when I was thinking about it. So we're going to make a bracket here. And I've got, I've got a whole place marked for it there. I'll have to kind of grind a little off on that end and probably a little on this end too but I've got this to work on and I've got to repair the uh, kick uh, the kickstand so let me get you over and show you that too okay on this it's seen better days for sure but it's the only one I've got and it'll last a while yet. I just need to replace the foot here and kind of take care of the split. It, I may end up having some, uh, uh, just, you know, when you're dealing with rust like this, you'll have some blow throughs on your weld. But, you know, it may not. This is pretty thick. Uh, I've just got a piece here that I'm going to put on the bottom of it. I've kind of got it laid out already. So I guess the first thing I need to do is do, a, uh, I need to cut this and get the other piece prepped too. I think what we'll do here is we'll just tack this uh, pretty good and then I'll take it over and get the torch out and we'll heat this up and we'll fold it up or whatever we need to do so that we can uh, make that fit pretty nice and then we'll grind it all flush. Okay, it's pretty lucky here I was able to just bend this over cold and just clamp it down to the back here. We'll tack it down. Okay, I've got this welded up, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, kind of trim this on the bench grinder and on the uh, sander a little bit, clean it up. Okay, there's our repair on the, the kickstand. I think that'll last for a while. They just, they set, a lot of times they just set for years under an eave or something with, uh, with them setting on the stand and this is in contact with the, with the ground. And of course, you know, they just, that's how they end up. So that's a good repair, I think. I'm happy with it. Uh, we didn't really, distract from the normal 
you know, you see some where they put big, big plates on the bottom of them to keep them from uh, sinking into the loose soil or whatever. I'm not into that. I don't really care for it, but uh, I try to keep them as original as possible. Yeah, I've just, uh, I'm going to weld a nut on the bottom here just to have a captive one. Uh, it's kind of like the other side is. It's the same, same type of deal. Okay, I've got a setup here and got my frame cleaned off a little bit. And let me get my helmet. Let's see if we can get that tacked on there. I got a pair of pliers or vice grips under it there to keep it from falling down. And flipped it over and welded the underside also. All right, I've got a new seat here. Uh, you know, when you're looking for these things, uh, even a used one's pretty expensive. I just elected to go to uh, KDI and buy a, a complete seat from them. Uh, Dave Kobo over there, he, he makes really good reproductions. This thing is just beautiful. And I'm hoping I ordered the right one. Uh, I, I put my first cushion on here. And I'll just take a little soap and water and stick the other one there. And you just have to kind of get down there and kind of push it in a little bit. Get it in one side and then in the other. And it's right in there. So we've got to put the... Uh, hinges on. Let me take a minute here and just show you uh, the whole product. Uh, I got the seat pan from him, the seat cover, and the seat cushion. All of this is uh, his reproductions and they're very, very good quality. You know, it, it's uh, 
you know, you're probably going to pay over a hundred bucks or probably more for a used one and it's you're going to have to repair it. So just spend a few extra dollars and uh, get you a brand new one. And I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, hinges on and then we'll see if, if we uh, can get it to fit. It's a hot one here today, guys. I think it's 84 degrees. That may not seem very hot, but it's uh, last few days we're in the upper 60s and 70s, so it feels hot to me. I'm gonna leave it just a little loose, and then we'll take it over and see if we can get it to fit on there. All right. Hinges line right up. Let's see if I can get a pin in there. Oops, I got it in that, but I didn't get it in the. The frame. Kind of awkward. I know if I get it all lined up, it's going to fit. All right, there we go, finally. Okay, I've just got to, I got to run my bolts in or it wants to hit over there. Good to leave it loose so so that you can you got a little wiggle room when you're putting them on. And your little your little cushions, like I say, these down here don't come with it, so just uh, get them from your Yamaha dealer. Well, it looks good. I got to get my latch stuff on there and I think we'll be ready to go. Okay, get our latch on there. Like it ought to be. All right, that's looking good. Look better after I get the seat cover on it. If you got a Yamaha Enduro, you're in luck because Dave over at KDI has a lot of good parts and they're excellent quality. So we've got a tank. Actually, I've got a couple, but I've got to work on all of them. So that's something else I've got to do. See what the fender is going to look like into there. Looks like it should, everything should fit like as it should. I don't have the rubber on the back or the front, so it's just kind of sitting there. So it's not quite positioned properly, but there again, we're starting to make some progress. Uh, probably in the next video, I'll be adapting the front hub. And I've done this on, before on the uh, 125MX. <clears throat> You've got to cut out some of the thickness here. Uh, I believe this piece actually does fit. And let me get you over on the table here and we'll take a look at it okay remember on the 125 MX I used the 250 360 forks so that give us more travel 
and by using the smaller, uh, the 125, 175 hub, you can uh, save quite a bit of weight, especially after you've added weight by putting these forks on. Now this, uh, the brake plate here does fit, but it's, uh, you've got to remove a little bit of material in order to, uh, to get it to fit right. And you probably see that there is a gap right here. And I can't remember, I think it's uh, 25 or 45 thousandths shim that's got to be made for that. And then this is the 125 axle. And what we've got to do is make the squeeze tube that fits in here. This squeeze tube and the spacer actually. And we've got to make that to fit this. So we'll make one on the lathe. This is the 250 360 one. And on this leg, we've got to put a build a, a shin or a bushing that fits into there for this axle. And I know there's a lot of people that are gonna say, hey, you know that axle's pretty small. Eh, this bike, by the time we're done with it, is not gonna weigh any more really than the 125. If it's, uh, if it weighs more, it, it'll just be like 10 pounds. So it's not a big issue. Uh, if it's good enough for the 125, you know, people bashing around in the woods and stuff with that, then it's going to work with this. And, uh, you know, this was a hot setup in the day, and it probably still is. Uh, the, uh, I think a lot, of, a lot of guys that are riding these in the woods, the desert, and whatever, wherever you ride, they're using the 250, 360 forks on the 125, and then doing just like what we did, uh, bumping up the rear to a 13 or a 13 and a half inch shock. But anyhow, we've got to go in here. We'll mill some of this out. I've done uh, a video on this before for the uh, 125MX, so it'll be pretty much identical. Now, this plate, you probably notice, has still got this stuff in it. I can't get it out. This actually came from the uh, CT3 that I was working on, and he wanted everything, he wanted his speedometer and everything to work. And it wouldn't because it's all froze up. I've, I've tried, but there's just no point in trying to take it out of there because you probably mess something up. I can go ahead and use this uh, with, with that stuff still in there. I'll make a plug that'll fit in here. And uh, that just won't matter at all. You know, a couple ounces of stuff. So I used the one that I had uh, on his bike so that he could have his speedometer. And I'm going to use his on this bike because I don't need the speedometer. We've got a long way to go on this project. And you can see here where somebody had made their own uh, mud uh, foot pegs. And they did a good job. However, I think it's a little thin. And they're, you know, they're kind of bent and whatnot here. And... So I'm probably going to cut these off and remake them. Uh, maybe just a little bit longer, maybe a half inch. But uh, I'll use a little bit heavier material and we'll just weld them right back on like they did here. Uh, it's, they, they really did a good job. They did. But I want to change it a little bit. So we'll, we'll be doing quite a bit of fabrication from this point on. Uh, remember that the engine has already been done, so uh, once we get uh, figure out what we're going to do with the swing arm, then uh, you know we'll get the engine in there and see where it goes from there. All right, guys, there you have it. Uh, just a bunch of little small jobs. We've got plenty of them yet to come, and uh, I've got I've got spokes coming. Well, the spokes are here. I just need the nipples from Buchanan's. He's, uh, he's sending me some replacements and uh, I'll be getting that wheel put together. And once we do that, we'll be able to get it on the bike 
uh, at least with the swing arm the way it is. Uh, I still think I'm going to add on to that swing arm an inch and uh, I just I just think it's it's helpful to extend that wheelbase a little bit and uh, it's a good project we did it on the 125 you can go back and look at what we did there uh, I've got the foot pegs to to mess with uh, I think I've got most of the parts uh, probably the only new thing that I'm putting on it's a seat and like I said for the for no more than the thing cost uh, brand new everything you just put it together yourself uh, you're not going to find a used one a good used one and you're going to end up having to uh, uh, do a lot of work on the seat pan or whatever and I've done that in the past and now that they're available uh, that part of my restorations is over I just uh, pick up a phone or go on eBay and uh, buy them from KDI but anyhow uh, the forks are ready I do have the uh, the tapered bearings for the steering neck so we'll be installing those getting the forks on and it will just a little little bit at a time uh, start assembling the bike thanks for going along on the ride and we'll see you next video